Today I'm hosting a collab called Meatless March, where we're going to be sharing some of our favorite meatless meals with you. And if that sounds appealing to you, then I've got the perfect solution for you here. This is my mushroom and pea carbonara, a very filling and tasty dish. So if you're looking to reduce your meat intake or just get some more veggies in your diet, stick around because I'm going to show you how to make this coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is one of mine and it is for a collab that I am doing with a couple of other channels for Meatless March. There is an organization called Meatless March and I will leave the link to them down below if anyone is interested. And what they try to do is get people to steer away from meat a little bit more. I came up with this theme because I was searching, you know, every month has like foods that are associated with it. So I thought, what could we do for the March collab? So I searched and then found Meatless March and I was like, that is perfect because I know plenty of people, such as my friend Judy, who are trying to eat at least one meatless meal a week. So this is a great option if that's what you're looking for. And there'll be others linked in the description box who are also participating. And you can go check out their videos for other recipes. Well, what am I making? Well, I am making a mushroom and pea carbonara. Now, if you've never made carbonara, it's a pasta dish that has a sauce that isn't a typical sauce. The sauce is actually made with eggs, but you'll see all of that as we move along. So let's go over the ingredients. I have here eight ounces of pasta. I'm using angel hair because that's Paul's favorite, so I figured I'd make that this evening. But any pasta that you want is fine. That will alter the bites and points if you use, say, fiber gourmet, which I do love, just can't afford. But if you use that, you can drop the bites and points down. But even with regular pasta, it's not that bad. Here I have salt, pepper, and my cooking spray. Those are just standard additions. Here I have eight ounces of mushrooms that I have quartered. Now, mushrooms are a great meat substitute if you want to have something, but you want to sear away from the meat, you can sub out mushrooms and it works well with almost any dish. And I quartered mine just to give it a little more texture. Since we're not having any meat in here, I wanted something with a bit more texture. They are about this size maybe, and I cut them in quarters. I had a few that were smaller that I cut in half and a few that were larger that I cut into six pieces. So just get them about the same size. That's all you need to do. One other thing, I did do a tutorial a while back on preparing mushrooms, storing mushrooms, and you definitely want to wash your mushrooms. I know we've heard all the stories about you never wash mushrooms, it's going to soak up all that water. It's not going to soak up that much water as you clean it off under running water, so don't worry about it. And if you know what mushrooms are grown in, you definitely want to wash them. Here I have one half cup of frozen peas and I have thawed those. You don't have to have them fully thawed, but at least get them down to where they are a bit more thawed. Here I have one half cup of grated Parmesan cheese. That is about 28 grams or about an ounce. Here I have three egg yolks and one whole egg. Now that is what is going to make the sauce for this, as I mentioned, and the yolks give it much more richness than just using whole eggs. There are some recipes that do just use whole eggs, but I prefer having the silkiness, the richness of having extra egg yolks. And don't worry about having three egg whites on hand. You can use them in all sorts of things. I will add them to scrambled eggs. If I throw in a few eggs, then just throw in the remaining whites. But I also did an experiment today for some cookies, some Almond Joy oatmeal cookies. They came out great. So I'll be showing you that within the next couple of weeks so you'll have a reason to use up those egg whites and a delicious one at that. And here I have one tablespoon of minced garlic. You could do more, you could do less, depending on your preference for garlic. 
But those are all of the ingredients. Let me shuffle a few things around. We're gonna get started. All right, so I have started my pasta water in my stock pot. I have my skillet sprayed with cooking spray and it is over medium high heat just to get it nice and hot. First thing we're going to do is just take three of our ingredients for our sauce and mix those together. The egg, egg yolks, and Parmesan. And then we're just going to whisk those together and get this all homogenous, all worked in together. You just wanna make sure that those yolks are broken up and that the egg whites are mixed in. And that looks pretty good right there. So I'm gonna set this aside. All right, so now my pasta water is boiling and I'm going to add some salt in you definitely want to salt your pasta water. Even if you're trying to reduce your salt, you should put some in because that water is going to allow the pasta to suck up some of that salt and give it some flavor. But I don't want to cook my pasta just yet because I have a little bit of time over here. So I'm going to keep the water going. And to my skillet here, I'm going to add in the mushrooms. And I'm going to cook these for about three to four minutes just to get them brown, to get them to lose some of their moisture. Now, why am I using tongs? Because I'm going to have to use tongs when I bring the pasta over to this. So I figured I might as well just use it throughout. So you just want to cook these down. That'll be about three or four minutes and I'll be back. All right, so it's been about four minutes and you can see that the mushrooms are getting some color on them which is what we are looking for. So now I'm going to take the garlic and add that in and stir that through. And we're just gonna cook this for about 30 seconds until the garlic becomes fragrant. If you cook garlic for too long, it does get bitter, that bitter burnt flavor, and you don't want that. So just about 30 seconds to get the aroma of garlic going through the house. And there it is. So now I'm going to add in my peas and toss those through. And now we have to let this cook for about five minutes, which is perfect because the pasta that I'm using is gonna take about four minutes to cook. You wanna cook your pasta to al dente, about one minute below what it says for finished. You are still gonna cook it a little bit in the pan here, so you don't wanna overcook it. So the water is ready. I'm going to add in my eight ounces of pasta and get that cooking. I have over here a little setup because we're gonna wanna save some of the pasta water. So I put a strainer over a bowl and pour that in. And then I have a quarter cup measure because I'm gonna have to measure into the pot when I need some of the pasta water. So I have that handy as well. But I'm gonna get the pasta cooked and the peas and mushrooms and I'll be back. All right, so my pasta is done. I've reserved some of the water, a lot more than I'm going to need, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And my peas and mushrooms are looking great. So I'm gonna take one quarter cup of the pasta water and add it right in here, along with our pasta. And we're gonna turn off the heat. And you just wanna to toss that through, get that mixed in with our veggies. And it doesn't have to be fully incorporated just yet. And now what I'm gonna do is temper my eggs which basically means I'm gonna add a little bit of the hot pasta water in to the eggs and whisk that through just so that it loosens it up a little bit and gets it more to the temperature it's going to be when it goes in. So you just wanna slowly whisk in some water. And so there, it looks almost like you're getting ready to make scrambled eggs. Now we're going to pour this onto the pasta but here's where you wanna be a little quick with what you're doing because you don't wanna scramble your eggs. So we're gonna pour that in and start stirring it into the pasta to make our sauce. And you wanna make sure that the heat is off for this because otherwise you will definitely be cooking your eggs more than you want to. And now that the eggs are mixed in there, we're going to get some of those veggies mixed in a little bit better. And the veggies don't have to be fully incorporated because when you're dishing this out, you can dish out the pasta, then just spoon some more of the vegetables on top. It's mostly that you wanna get those eggs 
mixed in there very well. And you can see that there's a nice creamy texture to the pasta. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now we're just gonna add a little salt and a little pepper. And then if people want more, they can add that at the table. You just wanna give it a little more season and stir that in. And that's it, we are done. Couldn't be easier. But let me clean up a little bit and I'll be back with those nutrition facts. All right, so I've cleaned up. I have my pasta spoon ready for when this is gonna be served, but let me cover it for now, just to keep it nice, warm, and moist while I go over those nutrition facts with you. Now, this is going to serve four people, and each of those servings is going to be seven Better Balance Bites or Old Blue Points. I'm on the Healthy Better Balance Plan, which is equivalent to the old WW Blue Plan, which is around where their current plan is. But if you are following calories, the calories for one serving is 366. And if you are following macros, the fat is 8.7 grams. Saturated fat is 3.3 grams. Protein is 18.1 grams. Carbs are 53.5 grams. Fiber is 4.7 grams. And sugars are four grams for one fourth of this recipe. Now, as I said, this is part of a collab, so go down in the description box and you can find the other channels that are participating if you are looking for some meatless meals. And if you enjoyed this video and this recipe, I'd appreciate you doing the usual. Like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video, such as this one, which is coming up on a day I don't typically show a video. Also, I wanted to take a moment to shout out all of you who have bought my cookbook, since it released a week ago yesterday, it's already sold almost 200 copies. And it made number one on new releases in the weight loss recipes category and number five in the overall weight loss recipes category. So I really appreciate that. And if you're looking for the cookbook, it is gonna be linked down below in the description box. There's also a link to my new recipes with Roy store where I have aprons, caps, t-shirts, etc. And also down there, you are going to find the link to the recipe right here and to the blog itself. If you're looking for any of my recipes, that's where you'll find them. Now also down there is a link to my Amazon storefront. If I've used anything on the channel that you may be interested in, it could be there. And if not, just ask me and I will find it and put it on there. Down there you will also find my social media, my Instagram, and several Facebook groups that I am part of. So check out that description box for all sorts of information. Now I am going to go get ready to serve this up. I think it's gonna be a very filling meal. And I hope you'll be enjoying some yourself very soon. So until next time, bye. Yeah.